Jesus got into a discussion with those who were there and, and he gave them this little analogy. He said, he said, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. And they got all, they got all bent out of shape because they thought he was talking about the literal temple that had taken years and years to be built. But if you read the rest of the passage, it says Jesus wasn't talking about the literal temple. He was talking about the temple of his own body. And he was saying, if you destroy this temple in three days, I will raise it up. So whatever you may want to believe about the resurrection, don't give me any of this nonsense about the fact that Jesus never said he was going to be resurrected because he said it over and over again. Now, if you have a hard time grabbing hold of it, let me encourage you, the disciples who were with him every day, they didn't quite grasp it either until it was over. There's no one else who's ever said it or done it, but he did it. He went to the grave and of his own power, he overcame death and walked out of that grave victorious over death. And he promises to those of us who will put our trust in him that if we will believe in him, we too shall live. We too shall have victory over death. Now those are the predictions of the Lord Jesus. But after the resurrection, there were some proofs that it happened. Let me ask you this question this morning. If someone told you the story of the resurrection and they said, I'd like to prove it to you. What would be some of the lines of proof that would be helpful to you? Well, I, I could name a number of them, but one of the first and most, most important would be, did anybody ever see him after he came out of the grave? If you look at all of the New Testament records, you will find at least 10 different appearances of Jesus Christ to his followers. He appeared to men and to women. He appeared to groups and individuals. He appeared in a house and on the street to disciples who were sad and disciples who were happy in periods of time that were short and in periods of time that were stretched out over time. The variety of his appearances is one of the reasons why people who have studied the resurrection, even trying to disprove it, have come away and said, there's no way that you can explain this. 1 Corinthians 15, 6 says that he was seen by over 500 brethren at one time. And then Paul writes, of whom the greater part remain to this present. In other words, when Paul wrote those words in 1 Corinthians, he said, there were 500 people who saw Jesus after he came out of the grave, and most of them are still living as I'm writing this. They could all have come forward and said, no, I didn't see him. No, no, they saw him. 500 at once. And as you go through these testimonies of those who saw Jesus, you realize that the post-resurrection appearances of Jesus are easy to document. He appeared to Mary Magdalene by the tomb. He appeared to the other women returning from the tomb. He appeared to Peter the same day, to two disciples on the road to Emmaus. He appeared to the apostles inside a locked room on two occasions, once when Thomas was with them and once when he wasn't. He appeared to the seven disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. He appeared to a group of 500 people on a Galilean mountain. He appeared to the 11 apostles. He appeared to James. He appeared to Saul on the road to Damascus. He appeared to John on the Isle of Patmos. He wanted to make certain that his resurrection could be proven beyond all doubt. And Acts chapter 1 verse 3 says, He presented himself alive by many infallible proofs <laughs> and indeed he did so the bottom line is this folks the body of Moses is in a grave somewhere the body of Mohammed lies in a tomb the remains of Lenin are in a glass covered casket in Russia and on his casket are these words he was the greatest leader of all peoples of all countries of all times he was the Lord of the new humanity he was the Savior of the world but when Lenin went to bed on January 20th, 1924, he never woke up. No one has heard from him since that night. He's dead, like every human being who's ever lived and stopped breathing. If Lenin is indeed the savior of the world, we are in a world of hurt. But on the authority of the word of God, I tell you today that Jesus Christ, who said he would die and rise again, is the Savior of the world. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the living King of Kings. He is alive. He is really alive.
This is no magic trick. This is the real deal. Holyfield. And we close on that.